In this one, we're going to be working through the Angular 4 setup guide. Um, I'm actually not going to go into a lot of detail about Angular here. I'm really just going to show you how to set it up. All of that detail I'll save for another time. Um, so we're using the command line interface. Here is some reference documentation that you can go and check out. And of course, it's for Angular version 4. This is the newest version of Angular, and it's likely going to be the long-term version of Angular, not AngularJS, as you may have seen in previous um, videos, or you might even still search Angular and AngularJS still comes up, but that's definitely going the way of the dodo. Um, so one of the things that I want to make sure that you've done is getting started with TypeScript. So you want to have some familiarity with TypeScript before jumping into Angular. I will say that here's a place you can check out. Um, so that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. So let's go ahead and jump into this guide. First and foremost, I need to make sure a few things are installed. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new terminal window here, and I'm going to go node V and NPM V. So these are the latest versions of this stuff. If you want to know how to install it, check out this guide because we actually run it right there. Um, so I have those things installed so I can actually install my Angular CLI. So when I run this on Windows, you can just paste that in there. On Mac, you have to do sudo. Uh, Mac and Linux, you have to do sudo. And then we would just, you know, type in our sudo user password. Okay, so I have it actually installed. It's there, it's working, um, Angular CLI, and this is the version. If your version is different, that's okay. Go off of that version. Um, in my experience, a lot of the Angular packages, when they upgrade, they will warn you about the changes that are needed to be done. Um, if there's any major changes, please let us know in the comments of our setup guide here. Um, okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is actually create a folder or a directory where I'm gonna hold this app. So you can put it in a lot of different places, but I will do it and then show you um, generally what I do. So I'll go into my folder dev. So I have an actual folder for all, a lot of dev projects or development projects in there. And I'll just do make dir and I'm gonna call it app dir. And I'll cd into app dir. And if I list everything out, of course, nothing's in there. If I do ng new and then I just like CFE app, this is how you actually create an app. So ng new. ng, of course, is short for Angular. It's just shorthand to reference Angular. And it's a nice just command line interface thing to do. You press enter. And this actually builds your baseline app. So it gives you, it like kind of bootstraps the app for you. So you actually don't have to do that much stuff. This part is key. Um, now you could absolutely write all of these things out yourself. Um, but in many cases, it's like, why do that if there's this awesome tool that's already available for you? Uh, a couple things you'll note right now is what it's doing is it's installing packages for a local version of this app. So all of the packages that it's referencing are going to be local within this app. Um, that is even able to be seen if we go back into dev and change into the app dir. We can change into CFE app and we can even see in here we've got node modules. That's something that you would recognize from working with node packages. Um, so that is our actual app as we see it here. So if I scroll down a little bit, I see that it's saying go into this new app. And then all I can do or I can start doing is ng serve. NG serve is a way to test our app. Um, if you've worked with TypeScript, it's sim similar to TypeScript Watch. And it's also similar to um, a few other commands that actually just run our project. So notice that it's watching this. It has Webpack. It's using Webpack like we've done before. And we can go to the local host to see it. So this is our local development server. We actually have an Angular app working. Yay, congratulations. That is not that big of a deal because we didn't really do anything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a new project into Sublime Text and opening up a new window here. I'm going to go ahead and go to Project, add this folder to this project. And something about Sublime Text, you don't have to use Sublime Text. You can use another text editor. Um, but I'm going to go into the root of that CFE app. And there we go. So this is where I'm going to actually save this project. And I'll say Save Project As. And with the same thing, app dir, CFE app, CFE dash app, 
that's going to be the name of my project. Okay, so uh, a couple things to note. I have a package installed of TypeScript. So that package, if you do install package, you can actually install the TypeScript package. I already have it installed, so it's not there. Um, so I'm gonna leave that out as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at a few things. Number one, package.json. Um, notice the dependencies. These are all the things that it installed. They're built in, they're ready to go, and they're ready for us to use. Now there's a lot of dev dependencies, so local dependencies that allow us to create this. So something that Angular ends up doing is it builds an app for you. Look at the scripts, here they are. Here are a few scripts. One of them is build, right? So we actually ran, what we're running right now is ng serve, right? It's not necessarily on here because there are other scripts. Oh, excuse me, it is on here, it's right there. Um, so we have that. NPM start, I believe, would do the exact same thing, and it does, right? So it calls ng serve, and that's the exact same thing. So that's kind of how you do it. So what I was getting to is the reason that there's not that many dependencies um, is that Angular compiles down. So if I do in, uh, ng build and press enter, it actually compiles this app into JavaScript. So it writes it into native JavaScript. Hopefully that sinks in a little bit, but if I look at dist here, um, I have a few different files on here, but if I go to index.html, these are all the JavaScript files that are generated as a result of Angular. So just separating them out a little bit, we see that these are the ones that are actually used on a production server. I mean, it's really, really cool. Um, so it makes it also very easy for you to you know, deploy these elsewhere. We'll get into that when we actually build something in Angular, but this is really, really cool about Angular. And, and all you have to do is ng build, that's, that's how it's done. Uh, and that builds this out for us as we see here. And then if we go to one of them, main.bundle.js is actually where the majority of your code is gonna lie. Um, and if I scroll down, actually I can't, I can't even find it and I don't particularly, oh, here it is. So this is where app works, that's where this came from. Um, on this JavaScript. I mean, like imagine trying to write this out yourself. Uh, no thanks. Instead, let's take a look at the actual app itself. What we can see here is inside of app.component.js, this is the TypeScript file that controls all of that. Um, I want you to notice a few things here. Number one, the selector. Number two, the template URL. And finally, styles URL. I think these two are a little bit more important than this one personally, but that's just because this is what you'll probably end up using more because really with Angular itself, you can just use this styles and add them here. Uh, that is something you can do, but for reusability, yes, you can absolutely add CSS inside of any given app. So like I said, these are the two things to note here. One of them being the template. Here's the template. Not a huge deal here, but it's pretty cool. It's using curly brackets for the variables that are being passed to it and the variables that are being passed to it. Hopefully you've guessed this, maybe not, but it is this actual class. So it's the app component class that's actually here. Pretty sweet. Okay, we've got a module here. This is the app module. So this is for all of Angular. This is the module that controls kind of all of Angular. Um, I, I don't wanna call it exactly a settings file. So if you're familiar with Django, it's not exactly like that, but it is a place that you can import and you will import. It's kind of the central place to your app in general. Um, so we can go the long way of doing things. And that is we can create our own components and do some stuff with them. But before I actually jump into that even, um, I did mention this app root thing here, right? So if I look at index.html, I have this right here saying app root. That is what this is correlated to, this selector right here. So if I just said, instead of app root, if I said CFE app, what I would have to do is come back into my index.html and change this to being CFE app. And what, what happens is then when it's compiled, this will also change to CFE app. Like when you run build, all of those things will happen. Well, without me telling you it, let's actually take a look. So if I run ng build, assuming that everything is saved, you know, index.html is saved and um, cfe.app is saved, assuming all of those things are saved, that should actually update and change our 
ready to send file and it does, right? And if I run it, um, just run the development one, do ng serve, press enter. I refresh in here and let's give it a second to build while it does that. I'll just check some stuff. So notice it's saying loading. It's not actually showing anything. So I do command option J to open up the command prompt here. And it says app root did not match any elements. So I'm gonna open it up in an incognito window, still saying the same thing. So let's go back into our index file. Let's save that. Let's make sure that's what it is. Let's save CFE app and let's save it again. And web com it should be compiled again. And now it's back to app working. Okay, so a lot of times it's saving errors that happen and that's why you get into some little bit of issues when it comes to running things. Okay, so uh, let's go back into our guide and let's look down and we see, okay, so we're at edit product project. We've done a few things in here in relation to this. Okay, so we really finished this guide already, but there is one other thing that I do wanna show you because it is so cool and that is at ngg component. So it's generate component and then whatever component name you would want. So let's just call it video list and I'll press enter and look at what happened here. So it created these files, uh, it separated them out for us and then it also updated our app module. So let's see what happened. We go into our app module, we've got our videos list component here, cool. We see videos list is a new thing in here. If I click on video list dot component, I see that I have just a standard class that's being exported that implements a on init class so that's that means it's it's kind of grabbing some some features from that class um it's, it's sort of extending that class it's not necessarily um it's not that's not necessarily the parent class is the point so it has a selector just like we've done before of course i could change that it has a template that template again is showing virtually the same thing as the app but it's showing these same stuff right so i actually have a component working now and on my app app component.html here, I can do something really, really simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna change this from uh, just title to being app video list, save that, and then we'll just do ng serve. Make sure it's serve, not server, um, cause that will not work. Um, so it takes a minute to build cause it has to compile a bunch of stuff and all that. Um, and once I do it, I refresh in here and boom. I now have my two components working in junction with each other. So if I do a quick change here, a quick change, hit save, assuming that I still have serve running, it will compile a little bit faster this time. And even before I got to the page, it's already refreshed. It's already looking really, really good. Okay, so this is something that I'm so excited about for Angular in general. I mean, it's just this full on framework that is just, just fixes so many problems that I saw with Angular JS and so, so many problems that I didn't even notice, but are just so like butter inside of Angular 4. So I hope you enjoyed this setup guide. I do want you to know that we are really committed to Angular 4, so we plan on making a lot more stuff. So if you check out joincfe.com slash projects and look up the Angular stuff, we will have plenty more of it there to come. Thanks so much for watching. Look forward to talking to you guys soon.